Pat Loveback from Love Healing Hearts, here to discuss following peace. Whoa, listen. I asked the Lord what should we talk about on this video, and this scripture just spoke in my mind. So here it is. Hebrews 12, verse 14. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see God. How peaceful are you? How full of ruckus are you? You know, yes, we live in a dispensation of grace. And yes, we have a loving, faithful, understanding, long-suffering God. But there are certain conditions that we are to live under. And one of them is following peace with all men. <clears throat> now, if you follow fights with all men, I think it's better to go back to the manufacturer, don't you? Something is malfunctioning. And it's not the manufacturer. God is perfect. Kadistu perfect. Or is it Kadistu holy? Either one is perfect. <laughs> so, when there's something that's malfunctioning in you, you have to go to God with that. You can't just let it slide and say, well, this is the way I am. They'll just have to understand. You know, I, rem <laughs> I remember I saw a woman walk in the room late one day. The whole, the whole thing, everything was already going. Everybody was halfway through it, what they were doing. And this woman walked in, grabbed a chair, decided that she didn't want to sit where the chair was placed to sit at. So she decides to replace, you know, to move it, move it to another, relocate it. Now, everyone that was around where she relo relocated it would almost have to go the complete other direction. Because it was like a firewall. There was no way out. If a fire broke out, they'd have to run completely around the other way. Because this woman, number one, she came like real late. The next thing, she put the chair in a very dangerous position in case of an emergency. And by the time she was all situated, everybody else had to get out of the way and maneuver to make room for her. Because she had created a spot for herself that inconvenienced everyone else. Now, when people do that kind of thing, and it's like, hey, would you move? Would you, you know, get that out of my way? Would you blah, blah, blah? Those are the kind of people that mainly think of themselves. They don't consider other people. It's about them. The world revolves around them. And if your world is not revolving around them, you are in for a fight. How many of you know people like that? If you don't have everybody accommodating your needs and your interest, do you get upset? Do you get angry with them? Like, what's their problem? I need this. I need that. Well, I need you to get it for me now. I don't care if you are taking a break. I'm paying money up in this place. And you expect people to want to serve you with an attitude like that. And do you really think that when God breaks, when Jesus breaks through those clouds, you're going to be first in line to meet him in the air? after you have made everyone's world such an unhappy one with your attitude. You know, it's very important to God how we treat each other. How do you treat people? When you see the, the maintenance man putting the lining in the garbage cans, do you speak to him? Do you treat him with respect? Or do you treat him like he's some invisible nobody? that is so far beneath you, you don't even have to acknowledge 
his presence. How do you treat people? How do you feel towards people? Are you really following peace with all men? Or do you raise a ruckus when the cash register uh, is the lady or the checkout lady or the checkout man is is um is counting up your money and they open the drawer and they give you your change and your short change by five ten or twenty dollars and they close the drawer and they're moving on well how do you handle that uh excuse me hello how do you handle that oh no i don't think so how do you handle it do I have to get the manager? Or are you going to give me my change? How do you handle it? You could just say, uh, excuse me, but um, can you show me the, I want to show you the receipt. This was X amount of dollars, right? Okay. But see this, this is what you gave me. Nine times out of 10, they'll say, oh, I forgot to give you the other. I'm so sorry. They'll be so, I mean, they'll feel almost embarrassed because they know it was their fault. But if you handle it well, and you're not calling on the manager trying to risk their job, they'll handle you very kindly every time they see you. Because they know you were kind to them when they were absolutely wrong. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. You think you're going to see the Lord? You think you're going to meet him in the sky when he comes to get you? Oh, I'm so excited. But you just got through cussing out the garbage man because he dumped some garbage in front of your house. And you went out the next week to ball him out and get him told. And you think you're going to see the Lord when he comes. Hmm? You just got through bawling out the luggage carrier because he dropped one of your things, you know, one of your bags. Unintentionally, he fumbled or he may have tripped over something and bam, lost his balance. Anybody who loses his balance, the natural physical thing to do is try to grab something for safety. Something's going to end up on the ground. But no, you have to cuss him out because your baggage is way more important than his safety. The world revolves around you. Yet, oh, you can hardly wait for the Lord to come through the clouds because you're going to be the first one in line so he can come get you. And the Lord, he might look down at you and say, I never knew you. Depart from me. Ye that work iniquity. Remember it says, follow peace with all men and holiness. Let me read that again. Follow peace with all men. <clears throat> not just white men. Not just black men. Not just your own people. Hmm? Not just rich folks. Not just the affluent in the church. Hello. Not just your boss. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord, not even you. Think on that. As the Bible says, Selah, pause and think on that. I'll give you a word to look up in the dictionary. Masticate. Is it masticate? I don't want to say it incorrectly. But anyway, masticate, masticate. Mas I got to look that up. Y'all forgive me. I like using words sometimes because they're funny. But it's basically chew on that baby for a minute. You know how cows, <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, chew on that baby. Think about it. Think about what following peace really means when your husband comes home and he's tired and you're looking at him waiting for attention because you've been alone all day 
And why can't he take you out for coffee? Why can't he bring you something nice to eat? Why couldn't he have stopped by the floral shop to get you some flowers? Why couldn't he come home and give you all the attention and sit and listen to all your nonsense all day? Guess what? Maybe brother man is really, really tired. Maybe he had a real rotten day. Maybe he could barely lift one foot in front of the other, just wish he could have plopped in the car and slept through the night without even having to drive home because maybe he didn't want to have to deal with you. Your wife's been working all day. You working all day. You both working. Okay? You both got money in your pocket. But you expect her to come home and cook a whole, a four-course meal for you because that's what women do. Yeah, right. And you really think that you're glorifying God by demanding her services. When the best way for you to glorify God following peace with all men and holiness, is to be thoughtful, considerate, and call your wife and say, don't bother cooking for me, baby. I think we're both too tired. I'm going to stop and get us something to eat. What would you like? And even if she wants something different than yours, go get hers and get what you want at a different place. But let her have her way sometimes too. Don't treat her like everything about her is supposed to be about you. Think about all that. How do you treat people? Follow peace with all men. Okay. I hope that we have gained a little bit of an understanding of what God is looking for. People don't owe us service. I don't care if they're your husband, your wife, your child, your employee. They don't owe you service like they're nothing and a nobody. You don't have the right as a boss or a supervisor. What is your problem? I told you what I wanted. Now, will you get to it? You want to keep this job? You better get on your J-O-B, buddy. Think about how you would have spoken to that person if they were your best friend, your favorite child, even though there shouldn't be favorites, the one you're in love with, or just your favorite employee. How would you have talked to them? Because when there's love in the mix, there's a whole lot more patience, a whole lot more kindness, and a whole lot more peace. Think about that. Follow peace with not that man, not that woman, not your child, not your best friend, and not your favorite. Follow peace with all men. And on that note, I say, amen.